This is Getting On With Life, Biblical Wisdom for Successful Christian Living. And this lesson is Controlling Spirits. I want you to consider the work of evil spirits in our world and whether you have come under the influence of such things. But first, let me remind you that the devil and his army of fallen angels have been defeated. While they are still at work, we have authority to resist the devil, and through Christ we can be completely set free from the enemy's attacks. 1 John 3 8 says, For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, to destroy the works of the devil. And Hebrews 2.14 says, Now, since the people are flesh and blood, he, Jesus, also shared in their humanity, so that by his death he would destroy him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil. One of the enemy's tools is fear, and I know people will be fearful at even talking about the devil. Many Christians want to believe there is no devil or demons. In Jesus' name I bind fear and free you to receive the Word of God and truth that sets you free. So stick with this lesson and gain the freedom God has for you. Evil spirits display strong control in people's lives at times. The madman with a legion of demons is an example. However, the enemy tries to influence all of us, not just those seriously under his power. The devil tried to influence Eve with his lying ideas and temptation. Fear, pride, evil thoughts, sensual ideas, anger, vengeance, and a host of other evil things can be prompted in our thinking by the enemy. He hopes to lead us into sin and away from God's grace. At the same time, we know that the devil has become the effective ruler of the world. Jesus referred to him as the prince of this world. So the various cultures around the world will have been molded by the enemy's influence. In John 16, 11, Jesus said, The prince of this world is judged. It is interesting to observe that various cultures have their cultural weaknesses. Tribal people are often bound in fear and witchcraft. Civilized cultures are often bound in pride and selfishness. Arrogance, gambling, immorality, drunkenness, secularism, religion, oppression, rejection, coldness, infidelity, exploitation, and other evils are at times linked to various nations or cultural groups. In each culture, the enemy assigns demons to set up a manufacturing process, as it were, so each new generation is tainted with the cultural evils in which they grow. You have been influenced by that process in your culture. That's why you feel at home among those who hold the same values you do. If the people around you are under spirits of superiority, you too will feel superior. If your culture is immoral, you too will be influenced that way. If the culture around you is judgmental and religious, you too will become judgmental and religious. Note that there is no holy culture or nation. The enemy is at work across the globe, so even in Christianized nations there are deeply rooted evils of heart and mind that have been cultivated, even in the devout. Two disciples traveling with Jesus came up with the idea of destroying a village that rejected Jesus. They were so happy with their idea they suggested it to Jesus. When Jesus replied and corrected them, he pointed out they were under the influence of evil spirits. In Luke 9.55, Jesus turned and rebuked them, saying, You do not know what kind of spirit you represent. What spirit would have influenced Jewish men to suggest destroying a Samaritan village? Would prejudice and long cultural rivalry be part of that? Or were they reacting in pride, offended that their master was rebuffed by the village? Or were they drunk with the idea of using divine power like Elisha did? It is certain their human instincts and interests were at play. So, accepting that there are demons and devilish controls over whole societies, and accepting that you have been raised and molded to some degree by those evil values which are part of your culture, how are you going to become free from such things? A first step is humility. Admitting that you and your culture are flawed is a good starting point. You don't have to hate and reject your culture, but to recognize that despite it feeling right to you, it is polluted and damaged. If you are too proud to admit that, you have no hope of becoming free. 
Another step is to open yourself to the Word of God for what it says, not what your culture interprets it to say. Look particularly at key Bible principles, such as authority, fear of God, holiness, and loving others. I expect that in your culture, children do not truly honor their parents, wives do not truly submit to their husbands, and everyone holds some form of contempt toward authorities. I expect that in your culture people do not live in the fear of God, but let themselves get away with things like others do. There will be forms of permissive living, from secret personal indulgences to false double life living. I expect that in your culture people try to look like they are holy, but hide all kinds of secret sins, lusts, personal agendas and so on. There would be very few who truly live a life that is holy and dedicated to God. I expect that in your culture people think of self many more times than they think of others. I expect there will be very few people who have become selfless or lay their life down for the good of others. So if you and your culture are not living the way God wants you to, then what spirits are controlling your life? Let God turn the light on for you, and as you see yourself and the issues more clearly from time to time, humble yourself, repent and call on God to set you free. And may God grant that you are led to truth by the Holy Spirit, and enjoy wisdom and understanding that set you free and keep you free, and even make you victorious over controlling spirits. God bless you.